Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I'm very glad you're here today. I have a scrapbook layout for you. We're going to be using the Gnomes for Spring collection and I'm documenting some photos of my son Clayton and his sweet little dog Luna. It's kind of funny, I just recently created a double page layout documenting photos of myself with one of my dogs and here I am telling the story of Clayton and his little dog. I think it's just the fun carefree nature of these photos documenting you know the playfulness of the dogs and of course that green grass and the blue skies it just goes really well with this whimsical collection. So I have four photos here and these are just shy of a four by six and then I have a four by four. So let me scoot these out of the way. Some of these are leftovers. Um, so I have a few solid pieces and like this was gutted from the center of um, the last uh, layout I did. So let me grab my Versamat. I'm thinking I'll be able to fit all four of these photos onto a single page. It's kind of, you know, one of those where I could stretch it into a double page, but maybe I don't need to. So I really love that photo there. I've got two horizontal and then this one, let's see, we could do something like this and have a little grid. And even though this one's extending above, it's not a perfect grid, that gives me a little spot for a title right there. And the only problem is, is I kind of have a big, bigger story to tell. So I could add my journaling down here, but we're getting a little bit tight. I almost wish I had printed these smaller if I was gonna do a single page. Let's bring in some of these uh, photo or uh, pattern papers and kind of see what we can come up with here. So I like the cloud paper. Um, I also like the plaid, which is the opposite side of the cloud paper. I think the yellows and the greens you know, go quite nicely. Um, we've got the little stripe here. There's word paper on the other side. I don't know if I really wanna bring in much of the pinks there. And then on this side, we've got like the green grass, kind of backyard type photos with gnomes. And the other side is the uh, glacier colored background with some clouds and little potted plants and garden icons. And they are in the backyard. So that would kind of work. Let's just see what we can come up with. I always like to start with my scraps and see if an idea can kind of evolve from those before I cut into my other papers. So I'll just play around and see what, you know, this is often how I get going. If I don't have a sketch that I'm following, I'll just start with my scraps and, you know, see where it goes. So let's see here. You know, I don't really like these photos right against that plaid. I don't think they stand out very well. I'm not sure about that. Let's try maybe this paper. One thing I'd love to do is kind of bring in a strip on the side and then maybe something like this. We also have a bigger piece of the plaid. We could do this and then just have them, I dropped one on the floor. Nothing like a little dog hair stuck to your photo there. So we could do something like that, but yeah, you know what? I think that I'm gonna make this into a double page. It's just not feeling right. So let me bring in my other verse mat real quick. This will make my double page scrapbookers happy anyway. Typically, I will figure out my photo placement first and then kind of bring in the pattern papers to uh, complement the photos. So this is my favorite one here. I think that's just so cute. She was laying on her back and so he was trying to mimic her pose. So I, I tend to put my favorite photo or the feature photo on the left hand side. I don't know why I do that. It's just uh, something I do. So then we have this one here where she's peeking through his arm there. And since he's facing in, I'm probably going to put this one on this side. So now we have a couple more. So what we could do is offset these like that. And then we could put a title and then maybe embellishing or journaling. And then we have these two. We could go like this, or we could even create a column like this, or even, you know, maybe we want the smaller one up here, or we could kind of create this, you know, zigzag pattern here. But I kind of like this. So let's start with that for now. Now, I think I want to, I still want to incorporate these photos. 
So we could do, I don't know if I want to go with the gnomes here. Let's just go with the backyard icons and try it this way. So we have this pattern paper here. We could put these photos. We're not quite wide enough to, you know, it's okay if they spill over the edge a little bit, but maybe we want to trim this down and just kind of go, I want this one on top, go with a single column. Yes, I'm going to start there. I'm going to cut those down. I'll be right back. I took that pattern paper and I cut it at four inches. So we have a four by 12 and then this one would be seven by 12. So maybe we can incorporate that onto this side. And then this one here, I cut down to uh, 10 and a half by six and a half. So I have enough room to uh, map these photos with an extra bit of cardstock. They're printed with a white border, but I don't really love them. Um, There's just, they're not popping off that background. So I need another photo mat. I grabbed a couple different options. I've got glacier cardstock, which is the color in the background here. So sometimes it's just a matter of holding it up and seeing which one you like better. And I also have jade. There's two different greens. There's jade and limeade in this cardstock. I do like the vividness of the jade, but I feel like it's a bit too much green uh, as far as right here on the photo. So I think I like the jade or the glacier better, but I do want to bring this color in. So sometimes it's fun when you have two pattern papers to kind of separate them with a little bit of cardstock. We could do that, but what if we matted the whole thing? in green and then brought green into the embellishments in the center. You know what, I do like that. I think that adds just a nice crisp, that green color, I like it. So let me cut this down and I'll cut some photo mats and I'll be right back. So this is cut to 11 and a half inches squared. So we have a, a quarter inch border and I will gut out the back side of that paper here in a moment. So we could cut this border so that it also has the green or we could run that to the top. You know, it's whatever uh, you'd like to do. And then I have my photo mats here. So we'll bring those in. And these photos with the white border are, can't see my measurements there, are four inches by five and a quarter. They're not a true four by six. Okay, I'm liking this. It's starting to take shape here. That looks good. Off camera, I went ahead and got the jade cardstock and then created a similar frame on the opposite side. So we still have these two photos and I say this all the time, what you introduce to one side, it's always a good idea to introduce that to the second page. Let's see how this looks underneath our photos here. And we could bump it all the way to the right edge, but I think I want the white showing like we have it on the left-hand side. So my photos need a mat, but the glacier is not going to show up like we have glacier on the opposite side. So we could try limeade and see how that works. And you know, I just don't like the green behind the photos. So what if we start with a little white first? I cut a long white panel here. We can bring our photos back in and then bring in the glacier cardstock and that looks much better. That definitely helps those photos to stand out. I do want to bring in this plaid paper. So I've got this piece here and I will cut that down if I decide, but I just want to kind of see first and I think that looks good. So I'll cut a little section. We could kind of pop it out the other side, but I think I like it like this. So let me cut that down to about, let's see, that's one, two. I'm going to go two and a half inches there. I like my layers to overlap just a little bit, so I tend to cut them a little wider than necessary. Now I used pewter ink on the last layout I created with this collection. I thought it was a softer look than black, so I am going to do that again on these papers. I won't make you watch the whole process, but I thought it was a good time to tell you the story behind the photos. Sweet little Luna came to live with us about 10 years ago. A coworker likes to go through the shelters and select dogs that are deemed unadoptable. So for whatever reason, they don't pass the test and we all know what that means. So she'll go through and pull the dogs that she thinks have potential. And Luna was on that list. She only had one day left and she was just fine and super sweet. She was probably scared to death in the shelter. And because she looks like a little border collie, my friend offered her to me because she knew my son was looking for a dog. We brought her home to try her out and it was love at first sight. So I'll tell you more in just a moment. 
I have everything inked up and adhered down and now we're ready for the fun embellishing part. So I pulled this stamp set from my stash. It's called I Woof You. And I have lots of dog stamps, but I picked this one because I felt like the dogs are really cute and kind of capture Luna's personality here. And then I have the Gnomes for Spring scrapbooking stamp. I want to use the story of today for my title. I think that's a great title that you can use on so many different layouts. And it's good size too. There's spring it has sprung and full of life and then a cute uh, collection of spring icons. And I'm not done a very good job about telling you all about the Gnomes for Spring collection because I just start jumping into creating with the paper. But there is an entire uh, scrapbooking workshop. Let me show you real quick. I just turned down the overhead lights so it wouldn't be glaring on my iPad. But if you go to the website and up here you'll see promotions, click on Gnomes for Spring, and then you can see all of the Gnomes for Spring collections. So there's the sticker sheet uh, with paper pack, or just a paper pack coordinating cardstock. Here's the stamp set, and you can get that with or without thin cuts. There's even this adorable little gnome. There's a card making stamp set, these cute little acrylic uh, flowers and butterfly shapes, and then you can see all the different bundles. So at the top here in the box, you'll see workshop guide, for scrapbooking and card making. So you don't even have to purchase those. You can just click on the guide and download it and have those to use with your own stash and just recreate the layout. So I've already got that downloaded, but here's the different projects. So there's a single page and then three double page layouts and they give you the cutting guide. So it tells you, you know, all the measurements you need um, if you don't want to do your own thing and you just want to follow along exactly. So there's that cute little gnome and she actually holds an umbrella. They just didn't add the umbrella um, to this particular layout. But yeah, super cute uh, goodies. So if you click on the gnome here, let me see if that, yeah, my internet's been a little slow lately, but here she is. Um, I know there's been a thin cut gnome for each of them, but this one with the umbrella is pretty darn cute and the flower on her hat and little bows in her hair. So if you love gnomes and you've been collecting the thin cuts, that's what this one looks like. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that so you can see all of the different elements for this particular special. So let's work on the embellishments and the title element. I'm going to bring in my little Misty and I already have the three dogs mounted to the door of the Misty. I'm using intense black ink in case I wanna add some uh, marker to those to give them a little bit of color and shading. And those look pretty good. I don't think they need a second coat. So we'll set those aside to dry. Actually, let me clean those off and we'll use the Misty to stamp our title also. So I've got a scrap of white daisy here. And again, we are using the story of today. So I have some brackets and I think that it's gonna look good cut out with uh, the stitch bracket detail. So let me put that back in the corner and I'm going to use the pewter ink since that's what we've been using for the edging of all the papers and whatnot. So let's get this uh, pressed down and you know what? I need, think it needs a second coat. So we'll do that one more time here and this will probably be good enough. Yes, that looks nice and crisp. So these are some stitched brackets that I have and I was hoping to use the smaller one, but that looks a little bit too tight. So we'll go with the larger one here and get that die cut out. I love the faux stitching detail and then the decorative edge. I think it dresses it up quite a bit. So we'll place that right there. And then off camera, I colored in my little dogs with the brown gray Spectrum Noir marker. Nothing fancy, I use the lightest color and then on the undersides, I use the medium. Along with the cute little puppies, I looked at the sticker sheet to see what could you know relate to these photos. I've got this sticker that says, you are my happy and then this little circle with the clouds and the kite. I thought that those would be really cute and I could add these to the layout. I did remove the adhesive backing with my anti-static powder tool. I could possibly use full of life and maybe sweet. So we'll see, I can pull those in if I need to. From my stash, I have a bunch of these little notebook edge journaling blocks. So I thought I'd use one of those potentially. And now we can kind of spread out our little puppy dogs in a visual triangle around the page. So maybe up here, I could go in this area, but I also have these pieces that I can kind of work into the cluster. 
So let's try to put the little dog on top so he has a little resting spot. And maybe we'll move this one to the top of our title element here. That cute little dog's kind of lost against the pattern paper, so I cut a circle from Limeade cardstock just to help him stand out and give him a little bit more presence on the page. I'm feeling like I need a little bit more to embellish with. So looking back at the sticker sheet, this sticker here says love grows here and that could work. That even looks nice in that area. And then we also have the yellow one that says full of life. So I think I can add that. We need a little anchor for this dog, but I'm also wanting to bring a little yellow to this outside edge here. There is a new stamp coming up in the March-April catalog. It's called Captured Happiness, and I am loving that Close to My Heart is bringing out these stamps that are more scrapbook sentiments. There's a bunch of words on here that you can kind of mix and match, so I think I'm going to make my own word stickers. So I've got Glacier Paper and the Limeade and our Pewter Ink, and this first one I've selected, actually I haven't used these yet, so I want to practice a little bit on some scratch paper. This one says every day and then the other word I'm going to use says happiness so everyday happiness I thought that was absolutely perfect for these just kind of everyday little snapshots of life and again there's tons of sentiment words on there perfect for scrapbooking and some of them are even big enough to be titles so we'll stamp happiness on the limeade paper let me clean this off really quick and we'll put that away. And then I do wanna add a little bit more detail to these uh, decorative word strips. So I'm going to cut a dovetail in the outside edge and then have them sticking out from underneath the photos. The little dog in the upper right hand corner just is kind of floating. So I want something underneath him just to kind of give him a landing spot. When I am choosing stamps that I want to add to my collection, that's kind of one of the things I look for. How often am I going to be able to use it? And these sentiment stamps are going to come in handy quite a bit. So I think that looks cute and I love how we can customize it just by stamping it on matching cardstock. Now I think I want to put this little dog up here. I don't know why, I just like how he's looking in at the photo. And then let's try bumping this up top and maybe creating a little cluster under the tag here. Since I cut the little circle on the left-hand side from Limeade cardstock, I feel like I want to introduce that to this side as well. So off camera, I cut a tag from the same uh, shade of cardstock, and I thought it'd be fun to just kind of sneak in behind this for another little layered element. It's feeling a little bit uh, bare, so I'm gonna give it some distressing with my nail file, and then I'll also ink up the edges. But these photos here, I told you about how Luna came to live with us, but Clayton is definitely her person. She chose him. I mean, she loves everyone in the family, but she sleeps under his bed. She watches for him. She gets super excited. And they have this little game that they play out in the yard. So I'm looking for something to kind of anchor my title over here. I've got a couple of scraps but I think it's gonna be the limeade paper. The striped paper didn't quite look right. Now I've got these shapes also from the upcoming March and April catalog. And there's, I mean, you can cut a banner tail, but this one has a little bit of stitching detail, but I want it longer. So what we're gonna do is secure this down. And if you hang the edge off of your die cutting plate, it will not cut that. So you can create a longer piece. So I'm hanging it over, I'll run that through my die cutting uh, machine. And then, sorry, I'm off camera just a little bit there. You're gonna get uh, this where it's kind of stuck to the rest of the cardstock, but if you just line it up with your trimmer, I'm gonna flip it over, line up the opposite side. Now we still have that stitching detail on the edge, but we have a longer piece. So partial die cutting comes in handy with all sorts of dies. I do this a lot with my tags when I want them longer also. That cardstock also is looking a little bit boring, so we could distress it, but let's add a little embossed detail. This is a new embossing folder, and it adds a little diagonal stripe. It's a square, so it's not quite long enough, but I think it's gonna be long enough to uh, emboss the portion that we want showing. Back to the story, Clayton and Luna have this little game they play in the backyard and he gets on his hands and knees and he kind of barks and he crawls towards her and she'll get down in a puppy bow and then spring up and run zoomies around him and it's so cute because if anybody else tries to play this game with Luna, she doesn't like it. She gets nervous, she, she'll leave. So it's their special game only. 
and she loves to sleep under his bed in a nest of his dirty clothes. You know, that's not where my first choice would be, but maybe it's comforting because it smells like him, but she has definitely found her person and <laughs> it's just the funniest thing. I'm adding a little bit of ribbon to the top of my tag here and I am struggling with this bow. They are not easy for me to tie, so I usually do it off camera, but I thought you guys would like to know that yes, I do occasionally struggle. I'm still looking at this little green tag and I feel like it just needs maybe a little something, it's okay. But I'm thinking about stamping some paw prints, maybe tone on tone, so it's kind of subtle. And I want it to look like random stamped pattern paper, so I pulled that out so that some of it will be hidden behind the journaling block, kind of peeking out. I think that's probably enough there. We can slide this back in and see how it looks. I don't know if I love the paw prints, but I don't know if I hate them enough to swap it out for a new tag. I don't know. Sometimes you just have to sit and look at something and it grows on you or you decide, nope, no, I don't like that. So we'll give it some time. But since I added them to the tag, I want to add just a couple over here to this one. So we'll do a couple paw prints and then I make a few more changes, which I'll show you here in just a moment. I went through my embellishment binder to see if there's anything else I could add, and I added that little paperboard shape that says cute, and by the dog it says oh yappy day above the paw prints. There's a photo of them playing their fun little game. And then I also added little elements of black with a heart, and then the, the little sentiment that says fun times right there. You can find the still shots over on my Facebook, Pinterest, or Instagram account. I'll be sharing those very soon. So if you want to check out the details close up, those will be there for you. And of course, everything I used is in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, uh, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It means so much to me. Thank you for doing that. And I will see you very soon here on YouTube. Bye.